thank you for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. So today I'm really excited to bring you my good friend, Gene Montrostelli, who is the uh, editor of TappingQA.com and the host of the Tapping Q&A podcast, which just celebrated its 10th year of podcasting. And I am very honored to say that I have been a guest on the show many times, and it's really exciting for me to now have my friend Gene on this show. So Gene specializes in helping businesses, uh, small business owners to eliminate self-sabotage. And uh, just before this interview, I found out about all kinds of other cool things that he does, uh, things that are reminiscent of my own clown background. Uh, so he does a lot of good for a lot of people in a lot of different ways. So ladies and gentlemen, Gene Montrostelli. Brad, thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to the conversation. Likewise. So uh, we talked ahead of time about um, what you really enjoy talking about, and you were talking about how you like using uh, tapping in the morning on your to-do list to really set the day up, which yeah. is awesome because I think it's, I always tell people, you know, start your day with some tapping. Get <laughs> great. Right. And this is a this is a great uh, sort of organized way of using this process for really helping folks to, uh, to create a, the best day possible. Yeah, because what I found is we are always willing to do the highest value task that has the least emotional consequence as we start our day. And the problem for most of us is, is that the high value tasks have consequences associated with them because they're high value tasks. You know, I'm going to reach out to maybe offer a product to someone. I want a joint venture with someone. So there's the emotional cost that they might say no, or they might judge me. So what I do instead is I move my way down that priority on the to-do list and I do something that isn't as scary. Like I might send someone an email or I might clean off my desk. So in essence, I'm doing the things that are on my to-do list, but more than likely I'm being I'm being busy. I'm not being productive. And I've, I found in my own life that on any given day, the three highest value tasks on my to-do list are more valuable to my business and my life than the rest of my to-do list combined. But if I don't take the time to get myself clear in the morning around those high value tasks, then I'm going to cross lots of things off the list. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that I've actually accomplished something that is useful in moving me forward. And so that's why I started this process. And you can actually look at some of the metrics in my business if you go back to when I started tapping in this way. I think it was um, 2011. And you can literally see the metrics change in the number of people who are growing in my audience, the number of sales I was doing, how much I was charging, the number of clients I was working with, because I was making the simple ask that I need to make as a business owner, but was doing it from an emotionally clear place. So I was making more of those asks and I was showing up at a place where I was clear and authentic. So I was doing it in the best way possible. So it became this huge difference in my business doing this one small thing that most morning takes me about five to seven minutes. So it's kind of like what Brian Tracy talks about with uh, eating the frog. If you have a frog, if the toughest thing on your to-do list is to eat a frog and it's the most important thing, eat that frog first. Yeah, and the nice thing about approaching it in this way is the frog becomes significantly smaller when we take time to do this sort of thing. So we're no longer having to muscling our way through that. Because, again, we're gravitated towards the highest value thing that has the least emotional consequence to it. And so if I tap on everything on my to-do list and I'm now emotionally clear about every single one of those, then... I just naturally gravitate towards that really big deal thing because it's the most valuable thing for me. And since there's not an emotional cost, I'm okay. And the beautiful thing about this is even if I just stay emotionally clear for 90 minutes because the fear, the worry, those sorts of things can come back because I'm not doing a comprehensive deep tapping session where I'm getting root causes out. I'm just clearing what's in the way in this moment. Inside that 90 minutes, typically I'm going to be able to do those three highest value tasks. So even if the value and the benefit of tapping wears off within that first 90 minutes of the day, I've already done the really valuable things and I can get onto the things that have to be done for my business, but don't have a huge emotional cost. And so as the day goes on, the more busy work administrative tasks are the ones that I do because those good things have been done right away. So ahead of time, you create a list of the things that you intend to do that day, and then you just work Absolutely. your way through yeah. resistance. Yeah, and for me, I actually, I'm a big fan of doing my to-do list the night before 
because by doing my, for me, what it does is it allows me to unplug. So I'm not walking out the door at the end of the work day going, oh, I have to remember this. Oh, I have to remember that. I've literally outsourced everything to the external hard drive, which is my to-do list. And the instant that happens, I emotionally let go of it. Now, I have clients who, if they have a long to-do list sitting on their desk when they walk out the door, that actually ratchets up the worry for them because it's like, oh, I have to do all of these things tomorrow. And so for them, it makes a lot more sense to start their day by doing the to-do list and organizing the day that way and creating it in the morning. For me, I like unplugging, I like disconnecting, so that becomes a really concrete way of doing that. And then what I'll do is I'll look at the to-do list, I'll look at my calendar, I might glance in my inbox and see if there are any tasks that overnight have occurred to me that need to be added, then I'll put those on the to-do list. So now I have a pretty good to-do list of what today is gonna look like. And then I go through and I go through the process. I imagine myself doing it. I pay attention to resistance. I tap on it. And once the resistance is clear, then I move through it. So it doesn't become a real complicated process. Excellent. And then do you do some tapping on all those things that you're not able to get done that day? Well, and so then, so then throughout the day, the, the tapping that I do throughout the day is, is, is twofold. One is, the, is for overwhelm. And, and the reason why we feel overwhelmed is we feel like we have too many things to do for the amount of time that we have. Now, there are going to be times where we're working on a deadline where there are too many things for us to do and we're going to feel overwhelmed all the time. And that's kind of the reality of it. Other times we're in a situation where I kind of like to think about it like every single task that I have in my to-do list is a note card. And if I spread them across my desk and I take them one at a time, I'm only dealing with them at one at a time. If I think of the entire list, it's as if I've taken the entire list and I've made it into a pile and the pile is now sitting on me and emotionally I'm thinking I have to do all of this right now. So as my day unfolds, if I feel overwhelmed, what I found is if I am doing a task, the overwhelm is gone because my head is down and I'm doing the task in front of me. So as the day unfolds, if I feel overwhelmed, I tap on... I don't have to do this all at once. If I do this one at a time, everything is going to get done. The overwhelm recedes enough that I can start the next task. Once I dive into the task, I forget about the to-do list and I'm completely immersed in what's front of me typically, so I don't feel overwhelmed. Now, when I'm done, I look at the to-do list and all of a sudden I see 18 things there. The overwhelm can come back. So for days where I'm working on a deadline, I might tap for overwhelm 16 times over the course of the day because every time I see what's there, the overwhelm comes back, but I don't have to get rid of overwhelm forever. I just have to reduce the overwhelm enough to start the next task, because once I'm in it, I'm immersed. So I tap on my to-do list at the beginning of the day, if emotion and overwhelm comes up during the day, and then the last thing at the end of the day, where you said, do I tap on things that I don't get done? Absolutely. Like I have a very specific end of the day ritual. So the first thing that I do is I work on my to-do list for tomorrow. The second thing that I do is I pay attention to any residual emotion that I have from the day about what I've been successful about or not, and if I have any anxiety for tomorrow. And then the last thing I do is I disconnect. And for me, the way that I disconnect is I organize my desk because I like sitting down at a clean space. I reach up and I literally pull into the middle of my chest and just like an old switchboard, I unplug myself and I walk out the door. Excellent. And I like to think of the idea of a switchboard because I'm not severing the tie and I'm not breaking rapport with my clients or my work, but it's, it's literally we're connected now, we're talking, we're disconnected now. And for me, it's this just really intentional process of disconnecting. So I've organized, I've emotionally cleaned up, and then I disconnect so I can walk out the door and I can enjoy my evening so that when I sit down tomorrow, I am prepared and I'm set up for a productive day and I need to do some emotional cleanup. I'll tap on my to-do list and I do that and as overwhelm comes up. And so the process just repeats over and over again, but it typically means I'm not tapping for more than three to five minutes at any given time. So like when I'm doing my deep work where I'm working with the practitioner I work with, or I have a list of things that I'm working on my own, I set time aside where this is me doing individual healing transformational work. The stuff that we're talking about today is just clearing the obstacles that are in front of me enough to be productive. Because if I'm just ticking off valuable things 
hour after hour, day after day, then my business grows, then my opportunities grow, then I'm in this opportunity where things are flowing because I create that sense of momentum, which is really different than doing deep work, which is valuable as well. Yeah. So uh, Steve Wells talks about getting to 100% yes. Yes. And sometimes, sometimes we just have to tip the scale past 50%. Just One, enough to get it. Absolutely. You know, the, the example I like to use when I'm talking to my clients and trying to share this with them. So right now, middle of the afternoon, I know that on the other side of this door, there is a bag of Starburst jelly beans for Easter. <laughs> and as I get that sense of craving while I'm in the middle of the day, while I'm having a conversation with someone I enjoy chatting with, the craving only needs to get down to a six and I can resist it. Because it do, I don't have to get it anywhere near zero for me to make a good, healthy eating choice. If it is Friday night, I am at a dinner party with friends, and there's 64 amazing desserts. And because I live here in New York City, it's going to be desserts from 17 different cultures. Getting that craving to a six is not going to be sufficient for me to make the healthy eating choice that I want to make. I'm probably going to need to get it down to a two before I devour everything that's in front of me, particularly if it's been a really long week and I'm tired. And so it's getting it to, we're reducing the resistance, we're reducing the emotion enough no. to tip the scale so we can start the action. And again, like I said, for me at least, when I immerse myself in action, it's easy for me to stay there until the time is up with that action and then I need to reset again, but I just need to start right. and that's all I need to do. It's, it's the same with working out. The, the gym I work out at, it's an 18 minute walk from here and as we've gone through a really long cold winter here in New York, going to the gym at 5.30 in the morning, it's 18 degrees and as I'm laying in bed, I don't have the energy to walk through the cold and work out, but I realized all I need to do is muster enough energy to put my shoes on and start walking down the stairs. I'm in a six floor walk up, so I walk down 75 stairs. I'm outside, the cold air hits me, I'm walking down towards the East River as the wind hits me, I wake up more, so by the time I get in the front door at the gym, I'm ready. I can do this, I have the energy. When I'm laying in bed, I don't have the energy to work out, I just need to get enough to start the first action that creates the chain reaction to get me to the place that I need to get there. So it's literally as I'm laying on bed, I need to get up and put my running shoes on. That's the only thought I have at 5.15 in the morning. And if I can muster that, and I have enough willpower to muster that, then I'm going to get there and do what I need to do. Right. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. So. Very much so, yeah. That's why so often experts will say, uh, you know, just commit to working out for two minutes. Yeah. You know, because that's easy. That's an easy thing to commit to. But once you do it, well, and, and for you, it's like once you get to the gym after you've walked. <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. I'm here. You like, get my hour. I am, I am going <laughs> to, I'm not going to waste that long walk in the cold on two minutes of exercise. Right. But yeah, I mean, inertia is a really powerful thing. Like the hardest thing to get moving is something that is stopped. And once we are moving, the next step is the easiest thing ever. I, last week, I had an inner ear problem, which completely messed up my equilibrium. And I figured out that if I knew where I was going and I started walking in a straight line, that my momentum was going to carry me. So even if my equilibrium was off, I had enough momentum that it overcame that and I got to the place I needed to go. Excellent. And so it's this idea about getting started and getting immersed. It's not about being able to do it all, but if we can get the resistance out of the way so we can just start in a small way, then we're going to make it easier to keep taking action. Yeah. And there are definitely those days where I'm lying in bed and I start tapping because oh, my yeah. it says, I don't want to get out of bed. It's like, okay, I just need to clear enough resistance to swing my legs out of bed. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, <laughs> and then I'm good. <laughs> and, and, and this is also not to say that just because I tap in this way that I do every single day perfectly. Yeah. Like they, there are still days in which it is 545 and I'm like, what? Like other than like watching a video of a sloth swimming in a rainstorm, like what exactly did I do today? <laughs> And, and, and so for me, the other thing I've recognized is that 
approaching tapping and approaching my day and approaching my to-do list in this way is it's not about doing everything perfectly and it's not about having perfect days. It's about clearing enough consistently so I'm consistently taking action. And the sum total of all of those small actions are the thing that add up to my success. And so, you know, I, I, I tap like this and I build systems like this not to have perfect days, but because I do this, I'm building resistance to the days that don't go my way and I'm building resilience for when I'm not at the top of my game. And so as long as I keep that in mind, it's okay. Like my workout's no different. There are days in which I am injured, I am sick, and it's, it's not a quality workout. But I did some work that is going to add up to all of the other work that I've done, and it's the sum total of those actions that make a difference. And so even knowing I have the system in place and talk about it, again, doesn't mean I execute it perfectly, doesn't mean I still don't avoid really important things, but I'm less likely to avoid the important tasks. I'm more likely to do the important task, which gives me more opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Progress, not perfection. I, mm -hmm. Because they're in perfection, but we have the option of being excellent and doing the best we can. And you know, like in the four agreements, uh, it, it said, you know, we always we're do, we want to do our best, and our best is going to be different on different days. 100%. So what you're talking about here is having a system that, okay, so when I have an off day, I, can, I, I have a system I can fall back on so that tomorrow can be a better day, mm -hmm. as opposed to, because so often when we have a bad day, if we have we, no system in, in place, it's like, I'm, I'm going to be gone for a week. <laughs> Well, I mean, today is a perfect example. Our friends who are watching this are not aware of what the last hour of you and my life has been like as we were about to start and power went out because they're doing construction in my apartment and the interview is going on and the guy actually walks in who was doing the construction on the interview. Like, like all of that stuff was, was, it was not the way this conversation was supposed to go, but we have the space and the resilience built in that we're able to respond to those sorts of things. And, and, and the other thing that is really important is to recognize that we don't create systems like this to execute the systems perfectly. Like the goal isn't for me to do the system perfectly. The goal is to have the life that I want. The goal is to have the business that I want. The goal is to thrive in the way that I want to. And my system is one more tool that I have that helps me to do that. And even with imperfect tools used in imperfect ways, it makes it easier for me to be successful. And so I hate for people to hear a system like this and think, well, I have to go execute Gene's system perfectly. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to look at things in a new way. And again, when I started doing this, I literally was only clearing the emotion for 90 minutes a day. And then I was being distracted and going off course. And still, my opportunities just exponentially grew because those 90 minutes were so valuable and I was executing them so well. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that's, uh, that's great stuff. Very useful stuff. I'm sure that... Uh, especially get letting people off the hook that it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. And, uh, but, but you've given all of us a, a great tool to, to start experimenting with and seeing how it can work for us and uh, create the best day possible. So and that, and that word that you used right there is the perfect word. It's always an experiment in doing this sort of transformational work. The most important question is how is it working for you? Like I hear all the time with folks with tapping, like, well, I'm tapping this way. Is that the right way to tap? I'm like, are you satisfied with your results? They're like, yes, great. It's the right way to tap. And if the answer is no, it's like, awesome. We now have feedback. Let's transform it and create something new. So use it as a grand experiment. And if it's something that's useful, awesome. If you tweak it to do it your way, even better. If it's unuseful, let go of the tool and find something that serves you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of people saying there's one right way to do it. It's like, okay. Yeah. There's over 7 billion people on the planet and no one way is going to be perfect for everybody. And uh, yeah. And, and there, there's no one way that's perfect for me, depending on the day of the week and what I had for breakfast. <laughs> exactly. You know, <laughs> exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gene. That's uh, great information. I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us. And as always, it's a great pleasure hanging out with you and for uh, sure. So looking forward to the next time and uh, thanks everyone for watching. Take care.
Thank you for joining me for another episode of... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now I can't remember the name of my show. <laughs> Your name is Brad Yates, okay? <laughs> I do want you to know that oftentimes when I speak at EFT events, the last thing I say is, if you really like my workshop, my name is, if you like this, my name is Gene Montrostelli. If you didn't, my name is Brad Yates. And then just walk off. Have you done that? I have here in New York. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually have. To a room full of people who know and love you. I'm, I, I'm honored. <laughs>